Hey, what's up, family? How y'all doing? Uh, forgive me for being the unmentionables. I, I don't know if people actually say that when they talk about their undergarments. Uh, if people actually ever said that. I don't know. I think I heard that one time in a movie. Y'all know my parents be watching them old-ass movies. Anyway, um, I want to start off by saying first and foremost, memory eternal to the uh, great schema monk Ephraim, also known as uh, Frank Atwood. And... Um, uh, the last name escapes me, Lord forgive me, but also remember turn it to, to our little sister Vicky. Because I think if we if we really believe that a God of mercy and, and forgiveness and love really truly is, then I think that's all we can do. Yeah, I mean it's because I mean I'd be real with you. I keep a thousand with the death. I can't. I can't process it. I can't. I can't process it. It, it just. You know. I remember I, I wrote a monk, um, that I know who's at the same monastery, as um, um. Great schema, Ephraim's spiritual father, and I was talking about porn and everything. Like, how do I? You know you know, get myself on the right path. It's like the fear of death. And I'm just like, it, it, it don't, I can't process it. It's not like, oh, I don't care. It's just, I, it, 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 it just can't, it just, I'm too stupid. Yeah, I can't, it can't, it can't hit me. So it's just like, I, I all I can do is be in awe and just like, Lord have mercy. That's, that's all my soul can produce is just that, that, in a trembling, trembling voice, Lord, Lord, have mercy. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I think we need to pray for everybody. You know, regardless of what you're thinking of the case, and pray for everybody. The Lord tells us to pray for our enemies, so we pray wholeheartedly for everyone. That when they leave this world, that they have met with love. You know, we, we hope and pray, you know. Not every, every heart's going to be open, but we pray that, that at least, you know, there's some softening, you know, and all we, all we can do is choose from them. Anyway, um, I'm writing y'all because I'm writing, Lord, I'm making this video because a brother sent me a, a message a couple minutes ago saying like, hey, you know, make a little video talking about what it was like to move over to Japan and, because I think they said there's, uh, um, was thinking about it or, you know, wanting to come over here and, but it can be scary, um, <clears throat> making that big of a jump, you know, moving from one culture to another language barrier, um, you know, um, a whole bunch of things like that. And as I bet, I, um, it, for me, it, I had always wanted to come here. You know, I tell this story a thousand times. My because of my neighbors, um, they were you know half the mom was Japanese, dad was was uh, U.S. military, and um, you know they me and my brother would always watch the their Dragon Ball and kind of Japanese TV recordings that they had like all the time. And that I still remember seeing them commercials, and there was something in there that just pushed me saying like I have to be here I have to be here I have to be here I have to be here. That's, that's the best way I can describe it like uh, I don't know if if euphoria is the is the correct word but like these feelings of euphoria about the thought about coming to Japan these like just powerfully euphoric moments that kind of said I need to go here you know what I mean and and I think I'm going to put a little bit of the blame on the whole anime culture, you feel me? Because that, that played a huge part in me, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, watching Toonami, bruh. You remember that? You know what I mean? When they had, like, Tenchi Muyo and, like, um, Inuyasha and, you know what I mean? Um, Sailor Moon and whatnot, bruh. That, that was that was my stuff back in, you know what I mean? Uh, so that really... I don't, I don't know if, if, you know, that kind of candy coated um my image of Japan, which I probably did. I mean, you know. Um, but that made the the I think the transition easier. Um, because it's not like I was in a position to where like, hey, I'm gonna go to a, a country I had no choice in going to. It's like 
I had, you know, from a young age been exposed to kind of the, the dessert bar, right, of Japan, you know what I mean? And so that really made me want to kind of just come here. Um, but the the thing that I, I think partially really helped uh, me to be able to like stay here for a long time is kind of a conviction to help. You know what I mean, um, like after the two thousand eleven you know earthquake and and tsunami and power plant disaster in Fukushima, you know I went and did the volunteer thing there in 2012 for about nine days. And that experience really altered me um, because it made me think, like, I have to come back and help. The first time I went to Japan in 2010 to Fukuoka and Kyushu, that was kind of just to study and kind of, I guess, the um, the final chapter of all of those years of watching anime and and kind of fantasizing about what Japan would actually be like that. I think the Fukuoka trip was was the end of that image of Japan. And then after the disaster happened, it kind of started a new chapter, um, you know, of, of how I viewed Japan and, and my relationship to it. Because I remember in 2012, after I did the um, volunteer program, I was like, yo, I'm going back. I got to go back and help or assist or just be present. You feel me? And then when I was able to move, th that was kind of the underlining foundation for it. It was like, I want to be of some assistance. And then also kind of, I want to just enjoy this culture. You know, um, I, I can't, I really, I probably should have sat down and thought about this before I started recording this, but it's just there's so much that I think helps pad it, that has helped padded the experience um, internally. Um, because you know, of course, if you're gonna move here alone, um, I mean, you, you, know, you most likely are gonna run into moments where you're just like extremely lonely depending on your personality type you feel me you you because I came here and um I remember having these days of just being incredibly lonely and sad and just frustrated and unhappy and you know what I mean um and those those moments I think will for most people inevitably come or at least come in some way um so if you're going to come here to kind of not be afraid of it, don't be afraid of, of experiencing that loneliness. Um, but, you know, don't, don't be afraid of it. And also kind of, you know, it gave me an opportunity to kind of better understand who I am at that level. You know what I mean? When I get to those moments where I'm really lonely or I feel I'm all by myself and you know I mean? and especially at the time the language wasn't that good and you know what I mean it's it, it kind of showed me okay this is what I do when I'm in a lower state I need to be better you know I need to actually trust God more I need to pray more I need to be more hopeful I mean it, it may not it, I'm rambling and it may not make a whole bunch of sense but I mean if, you, if you're going to come here for whatever reason um, but especially if you if you want to be here for a long time you need to have a good spiritual base you know what I mean you need to have a good internal state um, I think uh, what is it Hezekiah that is is, is is to mean stillness or something like inner stillness and I think if you come here, as I did, and I still am, and the inner state is just chaotic, it's going to be a hell living here. Or, you know, I think going to any country that's drastically different from your home country, culturally, language-wise, whatnot, belief-wise. Um, but if, if you have a, a good 
state uh, spiritually, or at least you, you, you're attempting to cultivate one. I think it'll make it a lot easier um, because you'll have the Lord to fall back on when you get stressed out about your new work environment or you're not used to the Japanese culture, uh, work culture or society or whatever. You'll have the Lord to fall back on to kind of be patient and to be calm and to ride out the, the temporary storm of whatever may be, you know, bothering you. But I say that, actually, no, that, that may be the most important thing if you're planning to come to Japan. Um, fall back on the Lord, you know what I mean? Um, to just help you through the difficult times. Um, because, because, bruh, it's a good living here. <laughs> At least right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's, I love living here. Uh, especially the culture part. That's another thing. If y'all gonna come here to Japan, get into the old stuff. You feel me? Get into the old culture. The old music. Um, um, Justin, are you telling everybody to learn Shigin? Yes, I am. I'm lonely. I got my boy George with me now. My boy George, um, uh, he started, he also, you know, he's Orthodox, so he, uh, he started doing Shiggy in a couple months back, and he actually really likes it. He actually really likes it, and, um, this upcoming Sunday, um, we got a, uh, performance together, and it's gonna be, like, the first two foreigners doing it, so I'm like, yeah, at least that I, you know, that I know of, I don't, I don't know, there's probably a whole bunch of better foreigners out there doing it, um, but no, man, y'all come here, come to Japan, and just learn this traditional stuff and take it serious too because I think there's a lot within Japanese traditional culture that there's y'all let me know if this makes sense spiritual vocabulary in the arts that I think we in the West have forgotten you know what I mean there's there's spiritual truths I think in the Japanese arts that you know like the tea ceremony I've mentioned this a couple of times like I don't know the whole thing behind it but the little bit I do know is like in the tea ceremony how you present tea how you offer the the, the tea to your guests um, with you know kudo the archery how you stand and and the patience and the the, the focus and I, I think there's a spiritual truth and a lot of this may be i think connected to like buddhism and, and things like that but there there's spiritual um vocabulary in that uh that i think the orthodoxy knows orthodoxy knows all that uh, which is why I was talking to a priest, a Japanese priest, of course, that said, no, man, I think orthodoxy has a lot in common with Japanese tradition um, and culture and spirituality. But I think it's a lot of this stuff that we in the West have forgotten. So I think if you're orthodox and you're from the West and you come to Japan and you start doing like Japanese culture flower arrangement, which I did, which I need to do that again because it was so fun. Flower arrangement, um, singing, uh, the traditional like martial arts um you're gonna learn stuff and then i think if you're orthodox it's gonna click a little bit better be like oh, okay it makes sense you know what i mean so come to japan keep god with you because there's gonna be some tough times but you get over it and you and it and it becomes a learning experience and it, and it becomes a growing experience and it becomes honestly a time of prayer in its own right um and learn the culture, man. It's it's so fun. And you can just make so many Japanese people happy um, by showing them the love and interest you have for their culture. And for them as, as images of the Almighty. You feel me? But anyway, I hope that helps. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm rambling. I don't, I don't know. Um, but I love y'all. Pray for me. Pray for higher monk. The soul of Hiram Monk Ephraim and Vicky and everyone. Pray for everybody. If you see 
a prisoner in the in the newspaper, pray for them. If you see the name of a victim of some crime, pray for them. Pray for the police. Pray for the judges. Pray for the garbage men. Pray for the store clerks, the 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 drug addicts, the drug dealers. Just pray for all of us. Pray for everyone for everything, cause cause the the Lord's love is is beyond what we can comprehend, and it's terrifyingly beautiful, and we're just not ready. So I think we just need prayer. I don't know. Forgive me. Love y'all. Bye.